This is an AI agent running inside an operating system, and I've been using it for quite a while now, and today I'll share you my thoughts about this and why you should and should not use this. But before that, if you don't know anything about AI operating systems, they're just like Mac OS, Windows OS, or Android OS, but with artificial intelligence. Meaning the operating system has the ability to finish an essay for you, browse the internet for you, or do the research for you. So with that said, let me introduce you to ByteBot. It is an open source AI desktop agent that automates any computer task. There are two ways to use this. You can use this with Railway or Docker. So yes, it runs inside of a Docker container, meaning you don't have to replace your device's operating system. All you need to have is Docker and you'll be able to install it. Now, before you start thinking, whoa, it has full control over my PC. What if it destroys my files or my computer? Well, don't worry because ByteBot is running inside a virtual desktop. We can see here that it's running inside Ubuntu. So only the stuff that you put inside of this environment will be accessible. Anything outside of this environment won't be accessed. If you want to try this yourself, you can just clone the following repository and set your API keys. You can use Anthropic, you can use OpenAI, and you can use Gemini. And then you can run Docker Compose up and go to your local host, and you should be able to see this. Now let me show you how it works. And here we have the app, and we can prompt something like, open the browser and go to weeklyhow.com. The agent would then open the browser and type in the address bar weeklyhow.com. So with this, you can literally tell it to browse the internet and help you with the research, etc. Here's another example. Go to Google and search for a free document app where you can write a Word document or a PDF file. And I ask it to install it if it finds one. At first, it told me to use Google Docs because it's free and doesn't need installation. But it also gave me an alternative, which is the LibOffice. That said, I told it to install the app and here you can see that it's now using the terminal. And yes, your eyes are not deceiving you, it's actually installing the app. Once that is done, I can go to the desktop right over here and confirm, yep, it actually installed the app. Pretty amazing. Now, one of the use cases for this is software development or web development. So let's try and ask it to create a game, like a snake game, and see if it actually works. So here I'll try to ask it, create a new file called game.html and make a snake game using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So now we can see here that it opened VS Code, which by the way is pre-installed, and now it is working on that game. And here we go, we actually have the game. Pretty cool. Let me just try to play this. This one is much simpler compared to the previous snake game that I developed in the previous video. But regardless, it made it, so I think it's good. Okay, now let's talk about the downside of this and why you should not use this. While this is cool and all, I find it completely or extremely inefficient because one, it is super slow, and two, it is super expensive. I've used this just for a couple of hours and I've already consumed my $10 budget. That said, my complaint is that I wish it would explain why it fails sometimes because there was a point, there was a point where I was trying to make it do something, but it just keeps failing again and again and again. Then I looked inside Docker and the log said that I've reached my quota and my balance is negative. So that's another thing that you need to keep in mind. Like I said, it gets very expensive. So the question is, is this worth trying? Yeah. Is it worth using though? Probably not, unless you just want to do research or write documents. But honestly, it'd be faster if I do everything on my own. For example, I tried asking it to create a new Gmail account and holy shit, it took almost an hour. I think its main weakness are forms, especially if there is a honeypot. And honestly, you still need to monitor its actions, especially if you ask it to browse the internet because some websites have CAPTCHA. So you need to take over and solve that Captcha. This whole thing just feels like ChatGPT agent mode. You prompt something and it will start a new virtual desktop and do everything there. I tried to copy a file from virtual desktop to Mac and I was really hoping it would work, but no, it didn't. There's another use case that they mentioned in their landing page and that is handling secure logins with 2FA. But I don't know, I wouldn't trust LLMs to know my passwords and I highly recommend you do not share your passwords with LLMs. I think you should really use this if you just want to test things out so your main computer is safe. Like you treat this as your virtual machine, but with AI. So my opinion is that this is good, but it's not there yet. But what do you guys think? Do you think this is the future of AI? Do you think in the future we won't even need to touch a computer and AI will do the work for us? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to Weekly How for more AI related videos like this one. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.